Do 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 do. Tech by Tips. Hello and welcome to another video here in Tech by Tips. Today we're going to be talking about traffic. I don't know if you're familiar with traffic, but traffic is a modern reverse proxy and it's also a load balancer that makes uh, deploying microservices very easy uh, because it can integrate with existing infrastructure components and it configures itself automatically and dynamically. And traffic is designed to handle large and complex deployments across a wide range of environments and protocols in public, private and hybrid uh, clouds. It comes with uh, a set of middlewares that you can use that enhances capabilities like, for example, for load balancing, for API gateways, uh, orchestration of ingress and uh, service uh, communication. It works with services like Docker, Swarm, Kubernetes, um, Mesos, Marathon, Console, Zookeeper, Bolt DB, REST API and File. So there's a lot of ways you can configure traffic and it's a very versatile um, application. It's available uh, on their website, traffic.io, I believe it is. And um, it's, you can get it for free actually. So for tra uh, Raspberry Pis, it's, it's an amazing thing to have because you can connect your services to a domain that you can serve. And it's really incredible because you can use like a dynamic DNS service so if you don't own a domain, you can use a DDNS service or you can use your own domain and then handle all the traffic there. It, it's also amazing because it gives you the ability to serve your traffic securely using SSL, using Let's Encrypt. You can configure it very easily and any subdomain or domain that you configure it to serve will be secured. So that's also very good because uh, your client information is protected on the transit and it also gives you a better look right a more trustworthy service that you are providing to people or companies online in this video we're focusing on how you can use it with raspberry pis right because it looks like the the public actually enjoyed my last video that was related to raspberry pis so i am providing you another um, shell application that i've created to easily configure traffic to serve uh, your web traffic using Raspberry Pis. For example, let's say you have a blog in a Raspberry Pi in your home or some kind of forum, right? Or maybe some application that you created that you wanna serve the world. It could be a progressive web application that is a game or something fun, right? But you wanna be able to serve it securely uh, to the outside. And you can do it easily, you can do it for free with traffic. So with this little application, I'm gonna make your life easy simple so you can get it working obviously the configuration is uh gonna be simple so there's many ways you can configure traffic but the application is gonna get you going that's the main important thing it can get you going securely and easily and then from there you can read on it and then figure out if you want to do something else uh with your configuration but your application will be running so it, it, it'll be way easier for you to get traffic going and serving your traffic properly on the internet so here's what we plan to do with our traffic control pi. Uh, let's say we have a user here outside on the internet that needs some service or application that we're going to serve them, right? The user first submits an HTTP request saying, you know, I need to find forum.somesite.com. And that goes through the internet over all the necessary hops that it needs and it gets to our router right so because we are the dns uh, address points to this ip address so then our router receives that request and redirects that to our traffic control raspberry pi and it says you have forum.somesite.com and then our traffic control pi checks uh the configured services that it has and it's uh reaches out to the appropriate backend server and says hey i have a user that needs forum.somesite.com and then that uh, backend server, which is another Raspberry Pi in this case, replies back, here you go. Here's the contents of forum.somesite.com. Then our traffic control Pi grabs that content, but adds a layer of security with an SSL certificate and gives it back to the router saying, here it is, forum.somesite.com. Pass it to the user. The router then 
passes it on the internet, which uh, eventually after routing goes, uh, gets back to the user and the user gets the contents of forum.somsite.com in a secure connection with an SSL certificate. The, the nice thing about this is that uh, we can use traffic for many subdomains or, or domains that we might be hosting. And this can be hosted in, in many different ways. It could be, for example, only one Raspberry Pi with an Apache server that has forum.somsite.com. Or maybe we could have a cluster of um, a Kubernetes cluster that has uh, our store, for example. And it'll be store.somsite.com and the traffic control pi is able to redirect that to the cluster and then you know the, the cluster is high available uh, has high availability because of kubernetes and everything so it's very good very stable or we could also have like a traditional group of servers in a data center or somewhere and that it's also capable of load balancing traffic between the servers so it's a very reliable and useful uh application to use to control our traffic and to provide SSL uh, security to the clients that connect to our services. Installing traffic control is pretty easy. Let's go ahead and do that. First, we need to clone the repository located in uh, github.com slash techbytips slash traffic control. We do that. Oh, turns out we don't have git. So first, let's do that app get install y git in case you don't have git make sure you have it installed so that you can clone the repository now that we have git installed then we can proceed and clone the repository located in github.com slash techbytips slash traffic control all right so now we should have a folder named traffic control we can go into the folder by cd in into traffic control we should see that we have the traffic control application file but it's not executable so first we're going to make it executable by doing a uh, ch mod and now it is executable so now we should be able to just run the traffic control application as a root user so using sudo and here we go we got the main interface for traffic control uh, and we want to install so we select option number one and press enter it first starts updating the list of packages that are in our operating system we then proceed to upgrade the packages and the system we removed uh, remove any unused packages just to make sure we don't have any bloatware running around and uh, we create the file structure for traffic control so that we're going to see now in a bit um it's uh in the etsy folder but first we need to decide which version of traffic we're going to run so let's go to that uh, repository that we see here and find out which version we're going to install so here we go paste and go and here we have the, the latest stable version seems to be 299 so that's the latest so that's what we're going to do we're going to go here v299 press enter and then it'll download the traffic uh, for the appropriate version that we need in this case this is a raspberry pi 4b running 64 bit operating system so that's what it's downloading it extracted the file cleaned up the downloads and put it in its proper place for running so that's a user local binaries so that is the first part now it's creating the static configuration file and uh, creating a um, dynamic configuration file for the traffic dashboard so uh, we need to provide our domain in my case i own a domain so let's do that we have techbytips.com. The website will be uh, made available there once I have the time to work on it. So now it's setting up traffic as a service and enabling the traffic service. And uh, it makes sure that now it is available as a service for our Raspberry Pi. And this tells us that by default, you know, the 
traffic dashboard can be accessed on the specific IP of the Pi slash dashboard and it tells us that uh, the user and password for the middleware to access it is that and you can change that going into the configuration file so we can uh, first check that everything was done properly so let's go into the Etsy traffic and now we have it there we have our traffic folder it has our traffic yaml and a folder for our dynamic uh, configuration files and the acme json which is where our ssl certificates are going to be stored we can check in the dynamics what we have and we just have the configuration for the dashboard so if we see that it's basically uh basic uh configuration with the user and password that you need to access the traffic uh dynamic configuration and uh that's it if we want to serve a subdomain or another domain uh with traffic so that we can process that traffic and redirect it to the appropriate place we can go here into option number three which is create a dynamic configuration file it'll prompt us for the name of that service that we are going to create let's say that's a blog so we name it blog and then it says on what url should it be listening for connections we're going to call it blog techbytetips.com and then we need to provide a url of a backdoor service so that'll be the servers that are hosting our application so uh, for example let's give it a 10.0.0.150 and then if you want to load balance if you want to have more than one server being load balanced then you can go here and say yes i want to add another backend url so you can go back and say 10.0.0.151 for example another thing that we can do here is uh, right now these two servers uh, we're saying that they're listening on port 80 but let's say that's not the case we could do something like this 152 and then port 8080 and that'll make it be another backend url and then once we're done adding backend urls we select no and it creates that um, service for us so we can validate that it was successful and working by going into the dynamics and showing the result so here we go for example it created the subdomain blog.techbytetips.com and it added three backend uh, servers to load balance for that service so it's pretty easy for you to create that it will automatically get the ssl certificates for that um, service that you are now handling and all your connections will be secured Now that we have installed traffic, we can go into the dashboard on that URL that we saw at the end of the installation and we should see something similar to this. Uh, in my case, I have already a bunch of services uh, configured, so you would only see like one in here instead of all that stuff that I'm having, but it should be very similar to this. You would have uh, statistics about your traffic instance and you can go into details to see information about how you have everything configured etc and then uh, in our domain that we have created before we can check that we already have valid uh, SSL certificates from let's encrypt so it is actually working we are secure and we are getting a, a secure connection for our clients to our application if we want to delete a service that we have already provisioned before and we no longer need we just go into option number four here and uh, we provide the name of that uh, service that we created before in our case it was blog so we provide that and it just as that deletes the service so it's no longer going to be served by traffic 
we can validate that by going here and showing the files in our dynamics folder we no longer have that blog yaml file if we don't need to run traffic anymore and we don't need traffic control install we can just go back here into the application select option number two which is uninstall traffic and it'll go ahead and start disabling the service removing all the files uh, deleting the file structure that we created to uh, serve uh, content through traffic and that'll basically be it we have a raspberry pi that is just like when it was before we started if we can go into here we can see that there's no longer a traffic folder so there is no traffic folder anymore